This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. And today I wanted to talk about the White House attack on Bitcoin miners and Bitcoin mining in general. This is being done through something called the Dame Tax. I'll link to this press release from the White House in the description notes below. But the headline here is making crypto miners pay for the costs that they impose on others. I think as long as we're doing this, we should make politicians and central bankers also pay for the costs that they impose on others, including inflation, social polarization, pointless, countless foreign wars. And if you're worried about energy usage and carbon footprints, the administration, this administration, previous administrations should all ask what's the carbon footprint of global war. Countless hours and money wasted by tax preparation and filing. And the list goes on and on and on of the costs that are imposed on others by the U.S. government in particular. So the DAME Act, this stands for the Digital Asset Mining Energy Excise Tax. It's a special 10 to 30% tax applied to the electricity consumed by Bitcoin miners. In other words, you better not use your computer to run SHA-256 calculators like this. I'm actually doing some hashing right now. I should probably be paying a 30% tax on the electricity I'm using to do this SHA-256 hash. You can see how ridiculous it is when you put it in this context, but it's actually much, much worse than just a 30% tax on the electricity consumed by Bitcoin miners. In fact, it's a direct political attack on what's a completely legitimate and legal industry that the current administration happens not to like. And this is an industry, the Bitcoin mining industry, is a real industry that provides jobs, state and federal tax revenue, etc. It also makes zero logical sense, the Dame proposal. If, for example, if I buy an electric car and charge it using electricity generated by quote unquote renewables, and I put those in quote because it's not exactly clear how renewable mining lithium is and even solar panels, etc. These things wear out and have to be replaced. So they're not, it's not like planting a, a plant or a tree or something. These things do have actual environmental costs, but we'll call them renewables. If I buy an electric car and charge it using electricity generated by renewables, I'm not driving up electricity costs for other people and I'm a good person. But if I buy a Bitcoin mining rig and use that exact same electricity generated by quote unquote renewables, for some reason, the White House says that I am driving up electricity costs for other people and I'm a bad person and I need to pay a special 30% tax. This is the logical inconsistency here and it's really ridiculous. If the administration wants to just come out and ban Bitcoin instead, why don't they just do that? Well, the reason they don't do it, of course, is because that kind of challenge, that kind of direct challenge would go straight to the Supreme Court and be rejected. Bitcoin is software, software is free speech, etc. But it's much more fun for administrations to set policy by routing around the system set up by our founding fathers. And this is really an abuse of the system, in my opinion. For example, this is something that the Obama administration did as well. Don't like tools of self-defense? Well, you probably can't change the Second Amendment. So what the Obama administration did is they tried to strangle the banking relationships of the companies that sold those tools, including other completely legitimate uh, businesses. And now you can read about this. This was called Operation Choke Point. There's a lot of theories circulating about that may be true that we're currently undergoing Operation Choke Point 2.0, which is targeting Bitcoin and crypto, and that there's been this conscious decision to take down banks associated with crypto, like Signature, for example. And there's there's good ev evidence to support this. But what I'm suggesting here is that we should go through legislative and judicial channels rather than these sort of workarounds where we try to target certain industries. This is completely unfair. And if a political party imposes special taxes on industries that they don't like, they need to be ready for an opposing political party to do the same thing to them when they retake power. And we have to ask ourselves, is this really how government should interact with an economy? Does this provide a stable backdrop and rule of law that allows for businesses to make good long-term capital allocation decisions? No, it absolutely doesn't. You can't have these sort of arbitrary attacks on perfectly legal industries. There are a few things that I believe sh that should absolutely not be politicized by either party. That is, access to electricity, usage of electricity, water, any regulated utility, internet access, etc. And so if you pay for your electricity, if you're actually paying for your electricity and you're not using it to electrocute small cute kittens, I'd like the government to just completely stay out of your business. And you have to ask yourself as well, how much energy is wasted by streaming government propaganda 
around the globe, not just the US government, but other governments? What's the carbon footprint of politicians and their endless limos and private jets? What's the carbon footprint of proof of war, which is how the US dollar is ultimately secured and the US banking system is ultimately secured? Why else is this a terrible idea? Well, there's a quote in here that uh, the administration is suggesting this needs to be national policy because if it's not, you'll just have crypto mining, Bitcoin mining, in other words, pushed from one local community to another, from one state to another. How ironic, because if you impose a tax like this, this tax will drive Bitcoin miners, a lot of Bitcoin miners out of the US. It'll drive them to relocate to countries with grids that are much more reliant on emission heavy electricity sources like coal, other hydrocarbons, countries like Kazakhstan, Russia, Iran. Uh, probably Venezuela, probably China to some extent as well. So if the administration actually cared about decarbonization, jobs, increased tax revenues, they would actually be doing everything they could to incentivize more Bitcoin mining to come to U.S. grids. And if American politicians actually cared, actually cared about human flourishing, they would be much more focused on increasing energy production, increasing energy production from much more energy dense and zero emission sources like nuclear power, rather than having this foolish scarcity mentality. This is a really great summary, I think, from Tom Mapes or Mapes here. The White House blog on the digital asset mining excise tax can be shortened to one sentence. And this really should be your takeaway today uh, that you can bring to your friends who think that this is just an attack on Bitcoin mining. Here's the quote. If the government doesn't like how you use energy, you will be penalized. And this is really important for everyone to recognize. All industries should be keeping a close eye and opposing these tactics. You could be next. We should have access to electricity, not be subject to politicization. I'm going to link in the description notes below to a couple videos that I've done that further flesh out my views on Bitcoin mining and the electric grid. Here's how Bitcoin mining helps the electric grid. Here's how Bitcoin mining is actually good for the environment in this video I talk about how Bitcoin miners can help to prevent the unnecessary venting or flaring of natural gas and landfill methane gas, as well as this response to the New York Times attack piece, which was really a terrible piece, their attack piece on Bitcoin mining. So I'll link to those three resources in the description notes below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.